Hey folks, welcome back to our channel Martech Market. Uh, today we are going to cover one of the most important analytics model. Uh, we call this RFM analysis. Let me show you how an RFM looks like. Perfect. So, I mean, before we get into how do we do this RFM analysis, let's understand what is RFM analysis, right? Um, so by the name it goes, R stands for recency, F stands for frequency, M stands for monetary value. Now, what do we do with RFM analysis is, Base is the recency of interaction, frequency of interaction, and the total value spent by a particular customer on your business. We bifurcate or bucket them into multiple quadrants. Here on the screen, you would be seeing nine quadrants. Uh, it could be six uh, as per the business requirement, right? Now, how exactly we do this RFM analysis? Now, base is recency. We give a score to a user, right? Base is frequency. We give a score to a user. Base is monetary value. We give a score to a user. And all of this will have its own weightage. Uh, say for the ease of calculation, in this video, we have given recency a weightage of 20, frequency a weightage of 20, monetary value a weightage of 20. Now, uh, how exactly we go about calculating uh, the RFM score for each and every user is, let me show you an example here. Uh, say your business would have uh, 100,000, 200,000 user base or even a million user base but I'm going to take three users for uh, explaining this concept. So like I said, uh, recency is given a weightage of 20. You would see that here. Frequency is again given a weightage of 20 and monetary is given a weightage of 20. Now let's take three users, user A, user B, user C. The most, the latest the user had come and uh, done a transaction is say in September for user A. For user B, it's been in August of 2022 and user C had latest come and did a transaction in July. So recency wise, uh, here we have given a score also. Say if a, if a user has come and done a transaction within the last one month, uh, we give them a score of 10, two months it's nine and three months it's eight. Now we know the weightage for recency factor itself is 20. So how we are going to calculate recency score for this user is uh, since this user has come in the last one month, we give them a score of 10 and base is that 10 into 20, this user scores 200. And now this user B has come in August. So two months is nine, nine into 20, 180. Uh, same goes for C. Uh, they have come in July and uh, eight. So eight into 20, 160. Frequency also we have the same. Uh, what we are going to do is the weightage is 20. So now if you see, by September, though the last recent transaction by this user has been in September, uh, but the total transaction by September by this user, the number of times this user has done a transaction is eight. Now, base is eight. In frequency, if you see, uh, if a user has done eight transaction uh, over a period of time, we give them a score of eight. So this becomes eight into 20, that is 160. Uh, user B has done 10 transactions, though the latest transaction has been in August, but the number of transactions is 10. So the user gets 10 into 20, that's 200. And user C is 100 for obvious reasons, which is 5 and uh, 20, right? Uh, monetary value, say uh, user A over a period of time with this 8 uh, transaction and the latest transaction being in September, in total has... Uh, given a revenue of 101k to this brand. User B has given an 88k and user C has given 49k to the business. Now, base is this. Uh, if you see the uh, score for each of this monetary value, if a user has spent more than 100k, we give, them, we give them a score of 10. If someone has spent 75k to 100k, 9, uh, vice versa, 8 and 7, right? Now, base is the monetary value. Since we know this user A has spent 101K, uh, the obvious score for monetary value is 10 and the weightage is 20. So 10 into 20 goes to be 200. User B gets 180, user C gets 140. So in total, uh, user A score, if I add up all this, they get 560. User B also gets 560, user C gets 400. Now, base is this. How do we represent? And this is just three users. It will be in millions, right? Uh, when it comes to your brand. So how do we bifurcate these users is? Now, going by the previous value, someone has scored 560, which is the highest. Those users are put in. 
star quadrant for them or star are loyal customers so even for star loyal uh, and the other quadrants also we'll have a score if the score is more than say 500 we put them in star or loyal like that uh, but yeah basis basis the score that we have seen uh, the first a and b would come under loyal and star c would come somewhere around under uh, unsure or hesitant the reason being the recency is also medium uh, the frequency is also very medium right uh, this is now why do we do such an analysis why do we uh, put our users into multiple quadrants very simple uh, we know this pareto principle right we know that 20% of our customer gives 80% of the revenue which means most of my business revenue comes from the top 20% of the customer this is usually 20 to 30% um and now giving them some preferential treatment giving them some special treatment becomes very important because you want these customers to stay loyal to your business to be the star spenders in your brand right to ensure they have this experience with you what you would be doing and to give give an example of preferential treatment say on an average your business takes about 3 days to deliver a product now if one of your star customer is coming onto the website or app one of your loyal customer is coming onto the website and app and is trying to do a transaction is there a way that we can deliver the product within a day right so now idea is to give these people a preferential treatment keep them your star and loyal customer similarly why do we want other quadrant is majorly if you see we have a lot of dormant customers right we would have spent a lot in getting this customer onto our business now there's there's a reason that this user would have become a dormant we'll have to first identify those reasons and ensure we try to move these users to uh, a group of so initially over a period of time we want this dormant also to become loyal but uh, idea is to slowly get them into hesitant and unsure but the focus here is while we put less focus on this database the idea is to give more focus to your star and loyal and rising star customers right now having said that uh, this is a one time analysis that you are any which way is doing where if i see this is the current month data that says hey so many users are my star customers so many users are my loyal customers but the data may not be the same when you when you do the same analysis the next month uh, why that would not be the same is some of your star customers would have slowly uh, become a little dormant and move to a category of at risk move to a category of need attention so monitoring this is very important at the same time someone from need attention would have become your loyal customer or rising star would have become your star customers so tracking this regularly becomes very important and uh, what is more important is if your uh, negative notion or negative bucket customers becomes more positive like a customer at risk becomes a loyal customer in this month uh if that ratio is higher then your marketing is on point if the ratio is otherwise where your loyal customer rate or your star customer rate drastically drops from uh whatever percentage it is to a uh, uh, at risk ratio or hesitant customer then there's something going wrong you are not giving that preferential treatment or you are losing out on business there's something going wrong in your business or marketing right so this is when tracking this at a regular basis becomes very important and one important point one other important point is so the uh, quadrants that you see now is majorly for all audience doing this on a specific segment of, of audience also would make sense when i say spe specific segment of audience say ta3 uh, uh, cities uh, this is just an example uh, to make it a little easy to understand say you have audience coming from tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 cities tier 3 cities Uh, by default the average purchase cycle is only say 2 months from the best of the best customer also right and um, tier 1 it is once in every week so in that way clubbing tier 3 and tier 1 may not give you the right uh, data or could end up giving you a biased data now so creating a segment of all those people of tier 3 and then drafting this uh, quadrants and then identifying who is a star customer becomes even more important because even, even so we are, while we understand we are any which way is going to get uh, transaction only once in 2 to 3 months when these people come how do we give them a preferential treatment so this is why rfm analysis becomes very important understanding who's contributing your business who are the detractors of your business uh, if you are spending a lot on your detractors that's just wasting money how to optimize your spends in terms of marketing in terms of communications and and put more efforts on continuing to keep stars and loyals and rising stars more loyal to your business 
becomes more important while i do not say that uh, you should never target your hesitant dormant and at risk customer that's very important to get them back onto the business i'm only talking about how do you reduce spends there and increase your spends here so that you are giving the right uh, experience to the right set of users hope this video was helpful uh, do subscribe to our channel thank you so much for tuning in have a great day